Hi, welcome to the Summer Devotional Series. My name is Larry Worthen, Executive Director of Christian Medical and Dental Association of Canada. Today's topic for me is the whole issue of leadership. How do you think of yourself? Do you think of yourself as a leader? It's interesting, when I looked at the Gospel of Luke and the account of the 72 being sent out, one of the calls that Jesus placed upon them was the importance of healing the sick. And he said, go and heal the sick. And when you do, tell the people that the kingdom of God has come close to them. So really, if you're a doctor, dentist, or medical or dental student, you really are a leader in the kingdom of God insofar as you exercise this healing ministry and you bring the kingdom of God closer to people. But in today's reflection, I'd like you to think about perhaps an overadded or additional expression of your leadership, moving into how can you help change the medical and dental system to bring God more into the middle of that. Because God's desire is to heal and to heal patients. And he wants to be acknowledged as the Lord of healing. Now, right away, I can hear your objections to this. And normally there are three objections that I've seen to people taking a leadership position such as the one I'm describing. The first one uh, is represented by um, Solomon. And uh, King Solomon was chosen to be this great king of Israel by God. But his first reaction when he heard this news was, I'm not capable. I'm not competent. He says, I'm young and inexperienced. I know next to nothing. But God uses that humility to bless Solomon, to give him wisdom and to give him power and to give him authority. And we know the rest of the story. So we need to realize that even though we feel inadequate to the task, it is the Lord's victory and the Lord's grace and the Lord's wisdom that he gives us that allows us to succeed. The second reason that people give not to participate in leadership today is because of the predominant thrust in our society towards secularism. A lot of this, I believe, is artificial. It's really the work of a small segment of the population that has decided to really take God out of society. And so when we are called to face this and to articulate our faith in these circumstances, it can be extremely intimidating. Here I'm thinking about the biblical story of Jonah, you know, the prophet who was called to go to Nineveh and to preach the word of God. Nineveh at the time was one of the largest cities in the world, eventually did become the largest city in the world the center of the Assyrian Empire, uh, and a great center of, of uh, learning and political and military power. Jonah was called to go there. We can just imagine his anxiety about really going and giving them the word of God to them, which was a, a word that required repentance and conversion. So like the rest of us, Jonah decided just to go in the opposite direction and take a cruise. And we know the story. God brought him back. He was thrown into the waves. He was swallowed by the large sea animal and spit out on the beach. And when he did go and preach to Nineveh, Nineveh was converted. We need to remember that even though things seem impossible, God is the God of the possible. And he can give us strength to speak out against this cultural move towards uh, secularism and to help remind our culture that God is crucial to our life together and to the success of our society. Third objection is that people feel like, well, I just don't know if I have enough to give to this enterprise. Will I be able to find some resources in myself to deal with the tremendous poverty that we experience in our society, poverty of spirit largely? And again, we're thinking about when Peter and John go to the temple, the beautiful gate, and there's a poor beggar man outside who was lame. And Peter says to him, when he asks for money, silver and gold, I do not have, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. 
and the man stands up and walks. Peter heals him. He brings the kingdom of God that much closer to this poor man and gives him his heart's desire. You see, all three of these stories should help us to realize that despite our own claims of poverty, poverty of spirit, not having enough resources to give, not having the skill sets, we're reminded that when the Lord calls us to act, he gives us the grace and strength to be able to go ahead. You see, it's not our battle alone, it's God's battle. And he decides to use us to achieve his goals of bringing the kingdom of God to the people on earth. Now, I don't know what way you might find to be a leader in your community. I know one of our doctors who has started a Christian school in her community. I know uh, another one of our doctors who made his way all to, to, to become president of one of our provincial medical associations. I know a couple of other doctors who've gone on their college boards and have been influential in ensuring that Christians are able to properly practice their faith in our provincial colleges. And I'm sure there are many, many other ways in which our doctors are leading treatments for particular patients, uh, or they're helping to uh, uh, teach in their churches about medical issues. In whatever way you serve, in whatever way you lead, you can be a significant force in bringing about the kingdom of God. I can hear many of you now saying, I don't have time. I don't have the ability. And I understand that. Living with a doctor, I understand the challenges that you face. But I just want to ask you to consider this, put it in the back of your mind, and at least be ready to see what the Lord has in store for you. That that opportunity may come along where you can influence the medical system or the dental care system for good. And God may actually be putting his hand on you and saying, come and trust me. Let me take you on this pilgrimage. Let me take you on this journey and show you how you can bring about my kingdom right where you are at. The reverse side of this is disturbing. Remember the parable of the talents? Boy, it sounds harsh, doesn't it? When the uh, ruler comes back uh, from his time away and the person who only had the one talent just kept it under their bed and hid it. And when the landowner came back, they were able to give him the one talent and and uh, and the the, uh, the landowner was so angry because the person of the one talent said, but I was afraid of you. I heard that you reap where you did not sow. Are we afraid of God? Are we so afraid of making a mistake that we're not going to take that talent that we have and invest it for the good of the kingdom? really want you to think about that one because I know that you're all very, very talented. You all have very, very strong leadership skills and abilities to be able to make the world, make your medical care system a place that is more Christian. Think about that. Think about that challenge. Think about the fact that it might not take a lot of extra time or a lot of extra work. It might just be that God has set you up for that opportunity where you can just do one small thing, which will have a huge repercussion and impact for your colleagues and for your, the whole medical care system in general. God bless you. And may the Lord show you where he wants you to lead and give you the grace to be able to do as well. Amen.